This review is going to be a little unconventional, fast, and loose. Normally when I play a game I plan to review, I record general gameplay footage, but I hadn't really intended to review Resident Evil 8 until I was basically done with it. At that point, I didn't want to potentially spoil anything, but I didn't want to restart the game, so here's some Mercenaries gameplay, which doesn't spoil anything in particular. Resident Evil Village is the 8th installment of the long-running Resident Evil video game series, with the Roman numerals for the 8th not so cleverly hidden within the word village, and is, in terms of the overarching story, a direct sequel to Resident Evil 7, a game I barely touched. Luckily, Capcom correctly predicted that no one would play Resident Evil 7 and added in a refresher on its story when you start up this game. Which is especially amusing because of how quick it goes by, offering only the parts of the story you really need to know that becomes threads connecting the two titles. In terms of story, there's very little here. You again take the role of faceless protagonist Ethan Winters, desperately searching for a loved one in a remote place. Ethan has a horrific case of tunnel vision, thinking only of his daughter, who is the one that's lost this time around. Frankly, the story is probably the least important aspect of Village and a miasma of minimally important aspects. If you've played Resident Evil 7, you'll catch on pretty quickly to the game's iconic atmospheric horror which it leans heavily into for the first handful of hours of the game. After that point, the game reveals itself to be this weird, fucking confused chimera of the series that doesn't know if it wants to be Resident Evil 7 or if it wants to be Resident Evil 4, and throughout the entire rest of the game, until the last 3 hours or so of about a 15 to 20 hour experience actually, the game forces you to endure the flip-flopping that is this game's wild identity crisis. They make zero effort to hide this. I'm gonna come right out and say it. The first half of this game is a fucking slog, and it boggles my mind that Capcom chose to let the game out the door like this. You go nearly an hour or longer before the game fully hands you the reins, which is a cardinal sin of game development. The only game I can recall taking this long to let you actually open up the damn game is Kingdom Hearts 2, and even though the first hour or two of that is a slog, it's worth it once the game opens up. Resident Evil 8 doesn't really start to open up until maybe halfway through when the game developers decided they wanted to lean more into the inspiration they received from Resident Evil 4. What's worse is that halfway through is about 8 or 9 hours of casual gameplay to get to a point where the game isn't constantly taking the controls away from you at every turn to try to show you something that they want you to think is scary or for exposition that you're going to struggle to care about. So if you can get past the castle area, the game does pick up and become playable or at least moderately enjoyable. Another thing that I looked back on while playing was that the marketing had this weird focus on Amazon tall, big titty, vampire mommy, Lady Dimitrisk, and everyone just picked it up and ran with it. I mean, I get why they did it, because it was the only logical path for Capcom to take in terms of marketing, since the game can't really stand up on its own merits. So that means they have to try to entice you into buying the game with the idea of a 9 foot 6 inch vampire lady crushing your genitals. Still, you gotta hand it to Capcom, they know their audience. 3 million copies as of May 11th. Anyway, it's truly unfortunate that the game's first half is so mind numbing because if it paced itself better, I wouldn't have to dig so deep into it. There's a game in there to enjoy, but you have to be really invested to get to the point where you can actually enjoy it. While we're watching some Mercenaries gameplay, I thought I'd talk a little about Mercenaries as a game mode. It feels really tacked on, like a second thought, as if they huddled around and felt really bad that each area had minimal reason to revisit it in the game, and thought it would be better to implement them into an arcade game instead. In previous games where mercenaries appeared as a game mode, you chose various noteworthy franchise characters and fought through enemies to get as good a score as possible. It was arcadey and fun, and you wanted to work as hard as possible to get high scores for every possible character. In Resident Evil 8, you're just Ethan Winters running around with the game's guns, and you can gain various abilities as you play that help you. There's also some mild element of resource management, but it's not so much that it's entirely necessary to enjoy the game on a casual level. It's a weird departure from the norm for sure, and I personally don't really like how different it is, but it is a fun diversion for a short while, and a nice reward for actually beating the game. 
And yes, you have to actually beat the game to be able to unlock mercenaries. It's not available right away. So, yeah, I can't honestly recommend Resident Evil 8 at full price, but for 30 bucks or lower, you could probably justify the purchase. If you really enjoyed Resident Evil 7, and you want more of that, you'll find more of that here. But if you're new to the series, you're probably better off playing Resident Evil 4, which was released for basically everything you could connect a TV to, are the more recent remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3. That may require some research to understand some story aspects, but man, you can do way worse than some light reading by walking blind into Resident Evil 8 for sure. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you want more chunky beef, be sure to subscribe or follow us on social media. Links in the description below. See you soon.